I saw the debate. I actually tweeted out. Mm -hmm. I called it a debate mm -hmm. on the genius of Dave Portman mm -hmm. because some people seem to be mm -hmm. thinking I was playing gaming right. the system, trolling. Uh, the people who think I'm going to jail, they're idiots. Uh, <laughs> let me clarify real quick. We are a comedy site. We're right. pretty pretty clear yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, we have no union at Barstool Sports. Yeah. Nobody is trying to make a union at yeah. Barstool Sports. I actually, the whole union debate, it's just a site that I don't like. Not the ringer. 2015 yeah. Gawker, which is a low-life loser site. Yep, they absolutely. formed a union of nitwits with no talent, mm -hmm. and I was making fun of them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't talking about, you know, factories. I, I actually don't know a ton about that. I'm talking about Barstool Sports, uh. and I was making fun of our own employees, saying, if you try to make a union, I'll crush you. And then these morons uh. who have no idea what we do jump into the fray like AOC right. or Crazio. Right. I want credit when that takes off by that nickname. Alexandra Ocrazio cortez he, he said it first, folks. First, because I know Donald's going to use it. I get the credit for that because it's a really good one. Yeah, but yeah. they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. You jump into the mud, and hey, guess what? We had the biggest day we've ever had in Barcelona sports. And this is a guy who last year got dragged out of the Super Bowl in handcuffs because right. Roger Goodell doesn't like me. Right. So it's a big game. And the people who are tweeting us, the blue check marks, and all these people, they should spend less time tweeting, more time working, and then they won't have to worry about the unions. So Welcome back to another episode of Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this one's a very good one today for you because you love AOC, don't you? If you don't know who Dave Portnoy is, you just saw him, the founder of Bar Barstool Sports. He's famous mostly, besides the whole content of his, um, his company there, for his pizza reviews, which are very popular. Sometimes he does them alone. Sometimes he does them with celebrity guests. They get millions of views almost every time. And the places they do pizza reviews at, if they get a good score... Their sales go way up. Take a look. What we do, Dan, real simple. Yep. You take one bite, you yep. score it, zero to ten. Be as cool as you want. We have a new Pizza Bite app <laughs> where people can rank places. I checked it out. I wish I didn't. It didn't have the highest scores going in. But give it a fair test. Right. You're a Boston guy, an East Coast guy, so give it a fair test. So the spat with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez started from a joke that she misinterpreted, didn't understand, and of course when you're going out looking for outrage, looking for things to, you know, rustle up your base with, uh, to garner donations, you miss the broader context. So here's what spawned it all. It started with this tweet about competing sports brand Ringer, and it says, Heard Ringer employees want to unionize. Little refresher how I feel about unions. And of course the joke here is being that gawker, the one he's talking about is no longer operational. The blog post reads as follows. Ba ha ha. I hope and pray that Barstool employees try to unionize. I can't tell you how much I want them to unionize. Just so I can smash their little union to smithereens. Nothing would please me more than to break it into a million little pieces. Oh, you think you deserve health insurance? You don't think you should have to work with squirrels in the office? You don't think I could? I should duct tape Hank to the walls? Well, now you can, can't leave. No more free water. No more vacation days. I'm going to dump rats into the walls. Now, that's pretty obviously a joke for anyone that bothers to read it. AOCs and others seem to be caught reading the headlines and not reading it at all. Um, and trying to virtue signal for unions, uh, union representatives, workers, I don't know. But it pretty accurately this is described as blowing up in their face. Rafi Letzer of Live Science or Live Science, don't know, don't care. If you work for Barstool and want to have a private chat about the unionization process, how little power your boss has to stop you, and how you can leverage that power to make your life better, my DMs are open. Now, realizing that he doesn't get the joke, Portnoy, Portnoy responds with, If you work for Barstool Sports and DM this man, I will fire you on the spot. Now, after, the, after seeing this, it should have been maybe a little bit more research into it, why would somebody just say this? That's a boss. Doesn't look good for your company. AOC doesn't care. She chimes right in without paying attention at all. If you're a boss tweeting firing threats to employees trying to unionize, you are likely breaking the law and can be sued. In your own words, on the spot. All workers in the U.S. have pr the protected freedom to organize for better conditions. Very stunning and brave from AOC. Even people in the comments say, you know that she has no idea what she's talking about when she says she could be suing them. They could be sued. So Portnoy then responds, Hey AOC, welcome to the Thunderdome. Debate me. Of course, AOC does not directly respond to that. She says, quote, Bosses don't wield all the power. Workers have plenty, yet many don't know it. Study up and search the history of labor rights in America. 
School doesn't teach the history of the U.S. labor movement, but we have weekends because of it, and we w risk losing rights if we forget how we earn them. Now, to any trained eye, that's just some classic communist speak for you, and I'm not kidding, unfortunately. Pretending that business owners are not as valuable as their workers is the main communist ideal where it is suggested that nothing can happen with, without the workers, so they should get a higher profit share or basically control the means of production, as they like to say. Now, the problem with this idea is that it completely ignores how tough and how expensive it is to operate a company. The capital it takes, i.e. buying the equipment, renting the facility, buying the property, uh, distribution, all of this, all of this stuff. And it says, no, a work person, person working on the floor of a factory is just as valuable as the person who runs the factory. So let's all band together as the workers and take over the production. And of course, this claim is completely absurd. And if it was so easy, everyone would just run their own business. Everyone would be their own business owner and make tons of money. Of course, that's the problem with communism. It's a fantasy world where everybody has the same drive, motivation, talent, and skill to do all the things I just named that an owner has to do. Now, AOC, who is still oblivious at this point, trumpeted this out as a victory and then asked for donations from her constituents and people abroad. Quote, labor lawyers have never had such a slam dunk case of workplace intimidation like this. Yesterday, Barstool founder went to Twitter to break national labor law and threatened to fire any employee who tried to form a union. But ex Alexandria wasn't having any of his anti-union scare tactics. And then, of course, she asked for donations because she's fighting for all the little communists out there. Now, even Barstool Sports' employees were replying to her saying, like, making fun of her, taking this as a joke. Obviously, they work there. They get the joke. And they love the environment. Everyone who works at Barstool loves it. They have tons of people sign up to be their interns and get paid nothing. And it blows people up. It, it, people go there and they become huge personalities and they leave. It's like a, I don't know, it's like the Howard Stern show almost. But for sports, people get side careers and become their new careers from it. So as Tim Poole points out actually in a video the other day, while AOC is getting a ton of donations, she could still lose re-elections. How, you ask? Because no one in her actual district supports her. We have known from different polls and studies, she has a very low favorability rating, even amongst her own constituents. So where are these donations coming come from? Let's let Tim Poole describe to you. Ocasio-Cortez's known donors from her own district are nearly non-existent FEC records show. According to the Daily Caller, only 10 people who live in Ocasio-Cortez's district have been recorded making donations to her re-election campaign in 2019. That's 1.4% of the average for congressional re-election campaigns. Let me stress that one more time. According to this story from the Daily Caller, Ocasio-Cortez's constituent donors are 1.4% are of average, meaning most people who are running for re-election in Congress are receiving 98.6% more from their own districts. Yet here's the thing. Ocasio-Cortez has still raised a substantial amount of money. Who is funding her? And this to me is actually rather nightmarish. There are people in her district who don't like her. Poll after poll showing her favorability is really low. Yet for some reason, outside her district, she has tons of support and is receiving tons of money, giving her a massive advantage in running for Congress in a district where they're not supporting her. But that influence will give her an edge to win. So something else you might want to note there is that Ocrazio has outraised all 87 freshman representatives in Congress for the first half of 2019. So she's getting a ton of money way, 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 way low. It was like, what was it, 1.4%? of what people usually get from their own constituents. So nobody in her own district even supports her. So she might not win again. Now, will she debate Tim Port or Dave Portnoy? I don't know why I said Tim. Dave Portnoy, Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro, people who have challenged her? Of course not. The only way she survives in this political climate is to live in her fantasy land. That's the only way she does it. Where she's fighting the establishment, she's standing up for the com common worker, and the little guy, and let's band together and fight these big bad people. Sadly, this is right out of the communist playbook, and I mean that seriously. And I'm not just saying that because I disagree with her, and she's a communist, she's a globalist, and it's the same thing. It's not the same thing where um, people are calling people Nazis that they disagree with and fascists and everything. This is literally 
Communist Manifesto speak. You must create a permanent under political underclass to fight against the capitalist uh, oppressors so that the workers can, of course, rise up, seize the means of production, and then everything goes into beautiful communist utopia. After that, seize the means of production from the bourgeoisie, those capitalist pigs who are taking advantage of you. It's simple, but of course it's actually stupid, and it's for people who can't think for themselves, and sadly it works until, you know, your country is collapsing because people don't know how to run businesses, are now running everything, and they don't know what they're doing. And when your best case scenario for your ideal is communist China, who still is basically a capitalist country, but then controls everything via communism, and sure they make a lot of money, but their conditions are poor, you've got their slave labor camps, you've got their anti-religion, you've got their uh, pro, they've got their thuggery going out there in Hong Kong right now, beating up any protesters. So if that's your greatest, if, if that's what you want to go to achieve, and that's your greatest example, then by all means, be a crazy person. But any other communist utopia that you thought was going to work, like Venezuela and, and the East Asia and small places in Africa and the Soviet Union, none of it works, I'm sorry. We get to see the, we have starting to see, and we've been seeing the entire political life cycle of AOC from her inception into Congress and her district to now, and in the future. And I'm willing to bet, to bet that throughout this whole cycle, she doesn't debate anyone unless she absolutely has to. Unless she's running for president and she has to debate people. Even in the Democratic primaries, it, she won't get any pushback because they're, all, they're clearly all talking the same, same stuff here. But anytime you see Bernie Sanders debate anyone, he gets destroyed. You ever see him against ten, Ted Cruz? It's a mockery of a debate because he gets destroyed so bad. Bernie Sanders gets de destroyed by moderators. Now, if AOC, who's got 30 to 100 years less <laughs> experience than Bernie Sanders, I don't know, Sanders has been in since the 70s, I think, she'd absolutely get destroyed. So she has to live in this land of pretend where she's fighting against people and her ideas just go unchallenged because as soon as they do get challenged, they get the floor mopped with them. I hope people see through such charades when you're constantly running from debate and politics. It means that you're going to lose if you do it, so you don't want to make yourself look bad.